so far, what we've talked about is the electrical potential difference in a constant electric field. We're now going to move away from a constant electric field. We're going to talk about the change in electric potential or the electric potential difference around a point charge. So it's an electric field that we've already defined in a point charge. So now, if you could please um, turn to page 768 in your text. There's a figure that I'm referring to. picture. Ryan came home from a birthday party with some cool face paint on her face and she wanted me to take a picture. And there you go. <laughs> what is that backdrop? The backdrop is a blanket that she has on her bed. And it seemed to fit really well with the uh, face paint. <laughs> Page 768 is this figure. What we have here is a charged particle. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point r distance away from this particle. And we're going to do that by figuring out the electric potential difference between points A and point B. So you can see here, r is defined as um, the unit vector, you could see, are the ds going from A to B. dr moving radially outward from Q. We've already worked with this equation. It's equal to the negative of the integral from A to B of E dot ds. This is a point charge, so we already have the equation for the electric field. Hamza, what is that equation? kq over r squared. So from A to B, we have kq over r squared for the electric field. Now, we do need to be concerned about the direction here. So technically, it, it also has that unit vector to give the direction for the electric field, dot ds. And that unit vector is in the direction of the electric field, which we know is straight out, or in this direction. You can see always straight out from the uh, point charge. So I want to take a moment and just look at this piece right here, unit vector r dot product ds. ds being the direction we're moving, so we're picking a random point on the way from a to b along that path, and we need the dot product of unit vector r and ds. Well, that's equal to getting rid of the dot product, unit vector r times ds times a cosine of theta. Now that we've gotten rid of the dot product, we now can put in the value for the unit vector. Class, the unit vector value is, by definition, r has a value of 1 times ds. Now, times a cosine of theta. If we look at this picture right here, you can see that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, where the adjacent is dr and the hypotenuse is ds. So we can substitute in for the cosine of theta dr over ds. ds cancels out, and we just get dr. So we can substitute for unit vector r dot product ds with just dr. So we have the change in electric potential from a to b is equal to the negative of the integral from a to b of kq over r squared now, just with respect to r. Uh, work with that integral for me a little bit here. Um, John? Um, you can take out uh, k and q. k and q. So we have negative k times q 
down to the integral from a to b, and it's easier to do the integral if we have r to the negative 2 with respect to r. What is the integral of r to the negative 2 power? Uh, Eric, stay there. Sorry, say that again. I have negative kq times what? 1 over negative r. Ah, let me do it in two steps just because I, I don't want to confuse people. That's r to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, which is uh, 1 over negative r. But it's easier to see it, uh, the integral piece there. So we have from a to b. So then if we rearrange this, this we get the electric potential difference is equal to negative kq times, and we'll do this, 1 over uh, negative r from a to b. The two negatives are going to cancel one another out, so let's just do that in a step so as not to confuse. kq over is 1 over r from a to b. So we have the electric potential difference is equal to negative kq, 1 over b minus 1 over, I'm sorry, r, the r at b, 1 over the r at a. Where r, yes? You left the negative. Thank you. But I've only left one of them. <laughs> Even worse. Okay, so with R, B, and R, A are just the distances from the point particle. So this is the electric potential difference. One again, once again. Going from A to B, we have just figured it out. It's just KQ times the quantity 1 over R, B minus 1 over R. Okay. Now generally what we do is we take the um, initial position to be approximately infinitely far away. Therefore, approximately. Therefore, 1 over Ra is approximately equal to 0. Therefore, the electric potential difference between infinitely far away and a point R from our uh, particle is equal to kq over this is the electric potential difference due to a point charge. If that's the electric potential difference, we can also go through and figure out the electric potential energy as well. So this is the electric potential difference due to a point charge. Um, we can also say, well, we know the electric potential difference equals the change in electric potential energy divided by Q. Therefore, the change in electric potential energy is equal to the electric potential difference multiplied by Q, or KQ over R multiplied by Q, or the change in electric potential energy is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R. Which should look familiar, right? Looks very much like the universal gravitational potential energy, big G, M1, M2 over R. Oh, wait. Um, I thought RB was all that was if it is that Ah, we generally start, so this is RA, which is the initial point, is generally infinitely far away, and we're going from infinitely far away to a location which is a certain distance away. Where A is, is where we start. So, so does this mean that like potential energy decreases in the linear rate as you get farther away? Well, as one over R. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've now figured out the electric potential energy due to a point charge, and or, sorry, the electric potential energy due to a point charge, and the electric potential difference due to a point charge. All right. Let's. Yes, definitely. Yeah. One over R. Does that mean 1 over, oh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> I got distracted by the negative there. So yes, 1 over uh, something that's approximately infinity is equal to approximately 0. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I 